So here I am in Autodesk Revit 2016 with a Revit model open and our objective is to run a custom interference check. Before we run this interference check, a couple things to note of this particular Revit file. First, you want to head over to the Insert tab of the ribbon and look at Manage Links. And the reason we do this is to take a look and see if there are any linked Revit models in this particular file. If so, we have a little bit of a better understanding of how to run the interference check either with objects that are contained within the current host model versus the linked model or running an interference check between the linked model objects and the host model objects. To run an interference check, we'll head over to the Collaborate tab of the ribbon. In the Collaborate tab of the ribbon, there is a Coordinate panel. In there, there is the command for interference check. When you select that command, you can actually run the interference check. If you've ran the interference check previously on a Revit file, you can click Show Last Report and it will open up the window to give you the last report that was generated based upon the last interference check. We'll talk more about this in a second. So to run an interference check again, I'll click Interference Check and click Run Interference Check. The interference check window will open up. There are two sides, the left and the right. The left hand side is to let the software know Am I taking a look at objects that are in the current host project or in the linked Revit file? Likewise, on the right-hand side, you can choose as well whether to look at current host project objects or the linked mechanical model to file. For this interference check, we're going to take a look at the structural framing elements and see how they compare or conflict against the mechanical model to content. And in this situation, we'll tell the software, let's look at all of the mechanical ductwork, flexible ductwork, fittings, air terminals, and mechanical equipment. We can choose, obviously, to click Select All or Select None or invert our selection. When I am running an interference check, I prefer to select them individually just to be extra careful to make sure I'm picking the correct category of objects to run the interference check against. And this applies to both the left and the right side. When we're finished with choosing what type of interference check to run and what objects to look for, we click OK. What ends up happening is the software will run through and look at all the objects you told it to take a look at and it will find any interferences that it can. It will list all of them and you'll notice that it'll break it down into the structural framing and different categories. You can hit the plus symbol for each line item and they will expand and show a negative symbol and all the content within for the particular situation where the interference occurs. So for example, if we scroll down, we can take a look. There are several interferences. And let's say I pick the last duct and I select this structural framing K series bar joist. If I need to, and I'm not sure exactly where it's at because there might be a lot of them, the minute you select the entity here in the interference report, it should highlight the actual physical object. And in this case, in the 3D model, I can see that it's there. But let's just say hypothetically, I couldn't see it because this was behind the window. You can click this command here called show, and it will cycle through any view that you have in Revit to help you see the interference situation. And so as you can see here, we've got the bar joist running across and hitting this branch of the ductwork. When we take a look at the interference report, you'll go through each one and you'll click show to find what those interferences are. You can export this report out if you want to by clicking export. What it'll do is it will ask you to give it a name and a location. The name you can call it whatever you want. 
the file type is going to be an HTML file and you can place it wherever you want. So I'm going to put it under my CTEMP folder and call it interference report one. And once that's completed, if you need to, you can actually open up that particular file. Uh, I actually use the keyboard shortcut Windows E to open up Windows Explorer. I'd head over to my temp folder and I'll see interference report one.html. If I double click this file, it should open up the Chrome browser, which is what I have defaulted for my web browser for reading HTML files, and it will list this interference report, giving it the name and the path, when was it created, when was it last updated, and it will list all of those sequential interferences that you saw in the interference report over here, and it will list them here in the report. So then yeah, you can print this out and you can cross-reference against uh, the work that you're doing. So this is how you run an interference check in Revit. There is a refresh button here. This refresh button is used after you have corrected some issues. And once you click refresh, it'll double check the interferences that it found earlier and make certain that if there were interferences that were cleaned up, they'll disappear off this list. This refresh command we'll take a look at when we hit the next particular module of how to resolve any conflicts. So once again, really quickly, the sequence on how to run an interference check is to go to the Collaborate tab of the ribbon, Coordinate Panel, and click Interference Check, and then click Run Interference Check. Specify what objects are being looked at on one, the left side, and specify the objects that the Revit software is looking on the right hand side, number two. Click OK and it will run the actual interference check. In the next particular module, we're going to focus in on how to resolve this particular conflict.